Well, so we will proceed. After performing the situation analysis and setting objectives, now we move to the next stage, and that is how we can get those objectives uh, achieved. Um, that is through uh, strategy setting. Now, there are different uh, activities that uh, you can perform that will help you uh, achieve uh, the objectives that you, are, you have set. And these activities will be performed, as we said uh, in the beginning, across the main activities or operational processes that are conducted in digital marketing uh, uh, planning. And that is from acquisition of customers, conversion, and retention. But it all starts with value proposition. So you can do different kind of activities in order to achieve your digital marketing uh, by planning uh, objectives. First, by new value proposition. And activity, activities here would be the kind, different kind of uh, uh, product features or even new products that you would like uh, to, to offer to your uh, customers uh, as part of new value proposition. And uh, here are some of the uh, examples of what organizations uh, could in introduce as part of new value uh, proposition. So it doesn't necessarily have to be new products, but it could be uh, new features on the existing uh, products. But also you can do uh, activities that will help you uh, acquire new customers. And these are some of the uh, specific uh, uh, examples of activities that you, you can uh, perform. Uh, search engine optimization, as we talked about it in this class earlier. Uh, affiliate marketing, that is use of uh, other uh, online actors to, to enhance your uh, market presence, and so on. And all these uh, different activities that you can perform to achieve uh, each of the uh, core processes within digital uh, marketing. So one of the things also you need to, to consider is uh, market and product uh, positioning. And that is after defi defining your, the situation that in which you are operating, assessment of your uh, competitors, you need to define a position that you want to occupy in the market space. How do you want customers to perceive your business? How do you want customers to perceive your uh, products? And this is what we call market uh, positioning. Where do you want to place yourself in the market space? Because we know that saving the entire market can be very uh, challenging from resources, uh, resource scarcity point of view that you may not have uh, all the uh, resources that you need to save the entire market. And for that reason, you need to define a specific uh, position that will keep you comp to stay competitive in the uh, market. And to this end, we can use the same uh, framework uh, we, we used uh, uh, earlier in this class when we discussed uh, business uh, strategy, that there are two options that you can adapt. Either you can save existing markets or you can go to new markets. And if you save existing markets, you can save either with existing products or you can come up with new products. We, we discussed this uh, earlier. And the four cells indicate on how the digital technologies can help you achieve competitive uh, position in each of the the options that uh, you have. So whether you want to save existing markets with existing products, you have ways how the internet and digital technologies in general can help you uh, stay competitive within that uh, position. Likewise, whether you want to save existing markets with new products, this is how uh, the digital technologies can help you stay competitive. So this is the framework that you can use and choose a position, and you have the guidelines on how you can implement 
uh, each one of, of these. But besides uh, market uh, uh, positioning, we also need to consider uh, target ma market uh, uh, strategies. And that is, we want to assess a specific market that we want to, to serve in order to determine the needs of customers with that, with, uh, within that market and potential uh, for growth within that particular uh, market. And based on this, you can create a strategy that can help you satisfy the needs of the customers that are found within uh, that particular uh, market. And the target market strategies uh, involve four stages that we will discuss now. It all starts with uh, segmentation, that you, you first uh, need to distinguish your target market into different uh, groups of customers based on their uh, characteristics. And that could be done through market research and analysis of the uh, customers, uh, customer data. So all that you are doing at this stage is to divide uh, your target market into different uh, groups based on their characteristics. So you define uh, the characteristics of uh, uh, customers and you group the customers based on the similarity of those uh, customers. We will look at uh, various criteria that uh, you can use to distinguish uh, customers. And then the next stage is target uh, marketing. That is after identifying the different groups that are found within uh, a market, you can assess now these groups and select a group that you would like uh, to serve. And then you have to position uh, yourself that within the, the group that you have selected, you have to create your position. How do you want those uh, customers perceive your business or perceive your, uh, your products? And finally, you come up with a plan to save that particular uh, market uh, segment with respect to the positioning that you are trying to, to achieve. So this is uh, analysis of uh, uh, market uh, segments and the uh, assessment of the market uh, segments, that is the different uh, customer groups within a, a market, can be done in terms of uh, the size or the value of uh, the, the different uh, market groups, how much business you can perform with each of the uh, groups that uh, you, you, you have in the market. And this includes both the potential business that they provide, that is possibilities for growth, as well as the existing business that you can do uh, at the moment, the current uh, situation. And also, you need to assess uh, the, mar the market share of your competitors within those uh, market uh, groups. So you have different market groups, uh, di different uh, market segments, and you have to assess how much uh, your competitors uh, have and then you have to assess the, the needs and of course you have uh, to create uh, a prop value proposition like what benefit you can offer to each of these uh, groups that are found within uh, a market and here are some of the criteria that you can use uh, to classify customers into various uh, groups the first criteria is the relationship with company. That is, you can distinguish uh, customers based on whether these are prospects, that these are potential customers, individuals that are currently not buying from you, or whether they are existing uh, customers, those that are buying uh, for your products uh, at the moment, or labs uh, customers. Labs customers are customers that we used to save uh, before, but we have uh, lost. And then we can use demographic uh, segmentation. That is, in case of business uh, to customer uh, contents, you can use age, sex, social group, geographical uh, location. So these are characteristics based on which you can classify your customers. In a B2B uh, context, you can consider uh, company size, the type of industry that you would like uh, to serve, and individual members of the decision-making unit. And then you can use uh, psychographical attitudinal uh, factors, and that is the attitude of different uh, customer 
groups within a, a market. Their risk orientation, their adoption to new uh, services, whether they are price uh, conscious. So these are attitudinal factors that you, you consider to distinguish different uh, customer groups. And also values, or how much you can make from uh, each of these uh, uh, customers. And then uh, the life cycle uh, stage, and that is uh, the, the position in the uh, life cycle uh, of a customer, at, at which stage uh, your customers are found. And finally, the behavior. So this could be kind of search terms, different customer groups are uh, uh, using, the kind of interest they show, for instance, on your website or on your social uh, networking site uh, page, how they respond to different uh, offers, and also responsiveness to campaigns and the purchase history based on the, uh, your previous transaction with different customers, you can create a profile of different customer groups. So these are the different characteristics that you can use to distinguish uh, marketing uh, market segments. And based on this, you can then evaluate and select a particular uh, market segment that you would like uh, to save. So here are five questions that you can answer in order to help you develop a customer-centric strategy. That is a customer-focused uh, strategy. And the questions are, first we need to identify who are our customers. Of course, if you want to, to, to sell, this is an obvious question that you need to start with identifying who is your customer. And the uh, automatic question that follows is uh, their needs and how these needs are changing over uh, time. And then you need to decide which ones do you target. And question number four is how can we add value? So you have to assess why do these customers buy from us and how you can add value to even uh, attract these customers uh, more. And finally, how do we become their first choice? This is the recognition of the fact that uh, whatever benefits you are providing to customers, these benefits can also be provided by other service providers or other businesses. So you need to uh, find out how you can uh, make yourself the first choice to those customers that you have uh, identified. And this has to do with positioning, that is, what perception do you want customers uh, to have about your business or product? And then differential advantage. How do you distinguish yourself from the competitors? That why should customers buy from you and not your uh, uh, competitors? What benefits will they obtain if they buy your products? And this uh, goes hand in hand with uh, online value proposition. That is the various benefits that your products uh, will offer. So. One of the uh, impacts with respect to marketing that digital technologies have offered is the way it has changed the marketing uh, communications today. Digital technologies have brought a whole new uh, platforms through which marketers can interact with uh, customers. And this has brought changes to unprecedented levels. So we will go through the different characteristics of uh, marketing communication that today have, an, uh, have made digital te uh, technologies stand out from the traditional approaches to marketing uh, communication. The first uh, uh, characteristic is interactivity. This is uh, traditional uh, marketing communication, which was mostly push approach to marketing communication where you have a, your organization has a marketing uh, message and you are trying to get it to customers. It was mostly a one-way process. So this is characterized, for instance, when you uh, place an ad on the television or when you run an ad on the radio or print uh, uh, media. It's a form of push uh, communication. So you are getting the message out to the customers and there is really uh, little feedback from, uh, from uh, customers. But the digital technologies have introduced uh, interactivity. And that is, we have new channels today that allow 
companies to interact uh, with customers. So it's pretty much a two-way process. For instance, uh, companies today have uh, uh, accounts in social uh, media networks where you can uh, chat with your, uh, your customers, you can engage your customers through the, the content. You have online uh, brand uh, communities where customers share their experiences and, and so on. So we have moved from uh, this traditional approach uh, to this modern approach, which is uh, uh, enabled by digital uh, technologies. Another characteristic is uh, intelligence, and this is becoming uh, increasingly important. We, we will discuss this more in the last uh, chapter of this topic when we talk about uh, big data. And that is, uh, digital technologies has increased uh, the ability of uh, companies to collect uh, data from the markets. And in fact, today you can obtain data at a very uh, low cost. Uh, and this is one of the advantages that the internet has uh, uh, provided to the, to, to the uh, uh, customers. Besides the uh, easy w ways through which we can obtain feedback from customers, but also you can collect uh, rich uh, data from your, even your own uh, website by tracking the behavior of your visitors on the uh, website. So digital technologies have enhanced the intelligence uh, uh, ability of, uh, uh, of uh, marketing function within organizations. Oh, sorry. Another characteristic is the individualization that through uh, digital technologies, it is much more easier to personalize the marketing uh, messages. When you use traditional channels, it's, uh, you create uh, one message, and the same message goes to everybody in, in, in the market. So the same ad is shown uh, across the entire target audience. But with digital technologies, it is possible to uh, personalize, uh, to customize market uh, messages. Uh, for instance, you can send uh, specific mail to, to a specific uh, customer or specific group of uh, customers, you can interact with, uh, uh, with customers with very uh, specific uh, uh, messages. For instance, we see these days uh, companies sending uh, suggestions to, to customers. And when you look at those suggestions, usually they will be very relevant uh, to, to you as a customer. And that could be based on your purchase uh, history with that company or by tracking your behavior. For instance, by looking at the kind of uh, websites uh, you, you are visiting, or for instance, on website, by looking at the kind of pages you like, someone can come up with a, uh, a, a profile of what kind of customer you are and what needs uh, you have. And they can propose to you uh, uh, offerings that they believe will appear uh, uh, attractive to you. And this is one of the uh, advantages that digital technologies uh, gives, uh, to give to companies. And then possibility for integration that through digital technologies, it's possible to combine different market channels to get uh, the marketing messages uh, to our audience. So you have multiple uh, platforms, multiple channels that you can use to get your marketing message across to customers. And then, of course, it provides industry restructuring. And that is, uh, in some cases, it has uh, eliminated uh, some intermediaries that is possible for companies to interact with customers uh, directly without using uh, middlemen. But also, in some cases, it has uh, created re-intermediation, that you have new uh, intermediary intermediaries that are involved. For instance, search engines, uh, publish online publishers, and so on. And lastly is uh, independence of uh, location. So through uh, online channels today, it's possible to do business almost everywhere across uh, the, the globe. So it, the digital technologies have uh, eliminated geographical uh, boundaries. You can operate a small business in Norway and save customers, say, in India, uh, Japan, or elsewhere in the world. And that is possible uh, through 
uh, digital technologies. Then we'll go to tactics, and that is the, the activities that we would like to implement in order to achieve the digital marketing uh, objectives. Now, as we have used uh, frameworks and uh, when we discuss uh, other parts of the strategy, most practitioners uh, today still use the marketing mix uh, framework as a guideline to implementation of the tactics that you need to, uh, to, 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 to conduct in order to achieve the digital marketing uh, uh, objectives. And the marketing uh, mix traditionally is composed of the four uh, P's, and that is the, the product, the price, place, and promotion. But of course, over time, there have been uh, other P's especially when it comes to services, there is an addition of uh, three more P's, and that is people, processes, and physical uh, evidence. So we will go through uh, these uh, four P's and later the additional three P's to see how digital technologies can help to enhance an organization to achieve through uh, to implement tactics on each of the, uh, the, the marketing mix. So it, we start with the uh, product, and this uh, constitutes what uh, uh, an organization uh, offers to, to, to its uh, customers. And the digital technologies uh, provide a, a couple of uh, ways through which you can improve uh, product, uh, this, uh, your products. And the two main ways are either through improvement of the core product or the extended product. The core products are the fundamental benefits, the, the, the main benefits that you are offering to your, uh, to your uh, customers. And through digital technologies, you can either enhance these uh, core uh, benefits, but also you can use digital technologies to provide extended uh, product. And this is additional uh, benefits that you are offering uh, to your uh, customers. Along that, the internet also provides opportunity for mass uh, customization of uh, products, and that is uh, taking advantage of uh, economies of scale, that through internet we can produce in large uh, quantity standardized products and lower um, the, the cost uh, that we incur in value creation. And that is possible uh, through uh, internet, uh, uh, the internet and digital technology in general. But also, it provides the opportunity for bundling. Bundling, that is collecting different uh, product uh, features or different uh, service components uh, together. For instance, we see today uh, airlines combine uh, their core products with other, uh, other products, such as uh, car rental, accommodation, and other services. And that is possible because uh, through uh, online channels, you can access uh, customers, and customers can easily uh, be offered all these, uh, company, uh, these products uh, together. Another aspect that uh, the digital te technologies have uh, uh, imparted with respect to marketing is the, the, the price. And here, we, we, there are two approaches, especially uh, for uh, startup businesses. We, we see increasingly uh, many startup businesses are trying to use the internet as a, an opportunity for offering their, uh, their products at a reduced uh, uh, price. And that is because the internet helps to eliminate a lot of uh, operational costs and provides opportunities for organizations to sell their products at, uh, at lower price. So in most cases, startup businesses w tend to use market penetration pricing strategy. That is charging a uh, low price in order to attract customers uh, to, your, uh, to your offering. And hopefully when customers uh, get locked up into the business, then you can raise uh, uh, price if there is opportunity for, for that. But market penetration pricing uh, is very uh, common for many uh, 
uh, startups. But also, we see many uh, other organizations that are simply transferring their existing prices to the web, that the same prices that they charge in the physical stores is what they charge in the uh, online stores. But these are companies with strong uh, brands that all they do is to offer customers alternative channels, alternative means to buy the products. They have established uh, strong brands and they know that customers, they have loyal customers that will buy from them anyway. So they use the internet as just a means providing alternative channels for, for their customers. However, we know that uh, the internet has provide opportunity for what we call value-based uh, pricing. That is charging a price that reflects the value that a customer obtains from the product they buy. So for instance, instead of buying an album with eight uh, tracks, of which probably you, you, you would like only two tracks or so, the internet, for instance, in, on uh, iTunes, gives you opportunity to buy that exact uh, track that you would like. So instead of buying the entire uh, uh, album that an artist has issued, you have an opportunity to buy the specific song that uh, uh, you would uh, like. So these provide opportunity for companies to split their offerings into smaller portions that customers uh, can buy, depending on the value they are. Uh, they are seeking. So I the internet has uh, four main uh, implications when it, with respect to price. One is it has increased the price transparency. So despite the fact that the internet gives us opportunities to do business today, almost each one of us has an opportunity uh, to do business starting with a very uh, low uh, capital. You also need to understand that the internet gives so much power to customers with respect to information regarding uh, product features and, of course, the price. So customers can easily compare prices for different uh, products for on the uh, internet. And for those businesses that engage in price discrimination uh, uh, practices, that is charging different prices to different customers, Customers can easily find out that because it's easy through the internet. We can easily acquire uh, that information. Another implication is it, it brings uh, downward pressure on price. That there is so much uh, pressure to reduce uh, price because through the internet, customers can access so many uh, alternatives uh, to what to the value they are seeking, and which means. Most products are reduced to commodities. That com competition is no longer based on uh, attributes, but rather on price, because customers have so many alternatives and they have so many uh, possibilities to select. And so, in order to stay competitive, most uh, uh, firms opt to reduce their their price. But also, it provides opportunity for new pricing uh, uh, approaches as I talked about value-based uh, uh, pricing. So you have uh, today auctions are very uh, common. And speaking of uh, value-based uh, prices, for instance, uh, Facebook and Google, when a company uh, buy the, uh, the, the, the ads, if you are looking for a space to advertise your, your business, the, the, the ads are sold based on uh, auctions. So actually, you pay what you think the ad exposure is valuable to you. And the last one is uh, alternative uh, pricing structure and policies. And this is very closely related to the previous uh, point that uh, through the internet, it is possible to come up with different alternative uh, pricing uh, policies. We discussed about uh, different uh, uh, revenue models uh, in this class when we discuss about business uh, models. So through internet has provided opportunity uh, to come up with different ways through which we can charge uh, the, the services that we offer. If there is an element, uh, marketing, el uh, marketing mix element that has been uh, affected so significantly, place probably uh, is among them, and this is distribution, that how we 
distribute uh, products has in so many ways uh, been affected by the, the internet and digital technologies uh, in, in general. And the, the implications of the internet with respect to distribution can be looked at uh, in four different ways. It, one is the place of purchase that uh, instead of physical stores or physical locations, increasingly today we buy online. You have new uh, channel uh, structures. So there are so many uh, of these actors that have been uh, eliminated in many uh, industries. But this also has implication when it comes to channel uh, conflicts. And this is special when a, an organization uses both intermediaries and its own uh, channel. For instance, if a company sells directly to uh, customers, but also it uses other uh, intermediaries, other actors to, to sell its uh, products, there could be what we call uh, a channel uh, conflict. Because your other channel, that is direct uh, selling, may compromise the interests of those uh, distributors that you are uh, using. But of course, we have seen uh, many companies that are, have been able to manage this multi-channel uh, approach. Uh, one example is uh, Apple that is able uh, to distribute its products through its own channels, for instance, or its own online store, as well as the online, phys uh, the, the physical stores. But also it uses other retailers to to, to get their products to the customers. And all this has been managed in a very harmonious as well, very peaceful uh, way. But in some organizations, this has created conflicts. And then we have virtual organizations that is pure play organizations, organizations that are entirely uh, based uh, online. And the internet has helped them to not uh, need uh, physical uh, uh, presence. Promotion, that is creating awareness and boosting up the image of your uh, organization and the brand, of course, and the products. And this is very uh, obvious that uh, the internet has provided ways through which we can promote uh, our businesses and products. And you have to find ways on how you can use the, the internet to promote your business. And of course, there are so many options that, that you, you can uh, follow. So you need to make assessment of which uh, alternatives or which options are best for your organization. For instance, not every business will be successful uh, by, having, uh, by engaging their customers, say, on a platform such as uh, Facebook. But of course, we also know there are many com uh, companies that claim uh, to create business through such platforms. But at least we know it doesn't fit for every business. So you have to assess the different alternatives we have and whether these are relevant for your business. And finally, we have to consider a service because the four Ps mostly reflect the manufacturing context. But with respect to service, we also need to consider the other three uh, Ps, and that is people, process, and physical evidence. In a service context, usually the delivery of the service goes hand in hand with presence of uh, people. But the internet and the digital technologies provide opportunity for automation of, of services, that instead of having human beings uh, save uh, customers, we can aut automate some of the processes. For instance, through uh, autoresponders, that when someone, uh, uh, when a customer sends a mail, a response can be uh, automated. In that case, you don't necessarily need to have people that will be uh, standby to save customers. But also, digital technologies can help to restructure the processes through which we save uh, customers. and physical evidence. One of the challenges that uh, online businesses uh, face is lack of feel and touch. That there is, in many ways, a lack of physical evidence in the products that we are, uh, we are buying. But of course, we have seen uh, these days increasingly 
uh, companies are taking uh, measures. One of the measures, as I discussed uh, when we discussed about uh, digital business infrastructure, the use of augmented technologies, that is capture of um, real-time images and combining with the graphics to enhance the experience of customers. But uh, also, you can also take uh, measures such as improving the design of your website as a way of creating physical evidence that there are so many experiments that have been uh, conducted where the kind of design you have on your website can either attract a customer or can put off a customer. So you need to take uh, 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 care about factors such as the appearance of the uh, the, 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 uh, the website that, that you, are, you, you have and how you can differentiate yourself from uh, customers. And of course, as you fulfill uh, the needs of your customers, that can save as evidence to the, to the value and the quality that you are uh, providing. And lastly, we will look at uh, branding. And branding uh, refer to the well, it's a, a name, a theme, a design, a logo, or any other feature that serves to distinguish uh, your products from uh, products of your uh, provided by other companies. So all the characteristics of a product or service as perceived by uh, a, a user. And one of the things that you, you want to do is you want to build a strong brand for your, for your business. And that is because through uh, brands, customers, can re you can reduce the amount of risk perceived by a customer. For instance, when you buy a, a product from a strong brand such as, say, Apple or Samsung, you have expectation about the quality just from the brand name. If, so if today Apple uh, provides, uh, uh, offers a new uh, product as, the, say, the smartwatch, we can have some uh, guarantee that this product will be of a certain quality based on the brand uh, that Apple has built. But also it helps uh, customers to reduce information uh, search uh, cost. So sometimes instead of looking around for uh, products that, you're lo uh, that you like to buy, you can just go directly to a certain brand that you trust. And of course, a strong brand will create a favorable trustworthy perception of, the, of your, your company. And this brings us to the concept of brand equity. And brand equity is the, the differential effect that a brand creates to customer response to a product. That what difference a brand name makes to your, to your product. And with respect to that, you want to create a brand that will have four characteristics. One is People are aware of it. They know that you are brand. You are perceived to be of high quality. They have strong brand associations that is strong, uh, unique, and favorable. And then finally, you want to create brand loyalty. You want to create loyal customers that will get come to you over and over, uh, no, no matter what. So somebody defined uh, loyalty by giving an example of uh, uh, in a marriage context that being loyal, say, to, your, uh, to, to a product is, is equivalent to being loyal to your wife or uh, your girlfriend in the sense that despite all other beautiful girls that you might see, you still stick to the, to the one that you have, and that's the kind of loyalty. In the context of products, being loyal means that regardless of other products that you can see, you still stick to the one that you are uh, buying. So no matter what, you want to create uh, customers that are loyal to your products, that they can overcome temptations from other uh, businesses. So here are some uh, advi pieces of advice on how you can build a successful uh, online uh, brands. First, you need to provide convenience. Uh, that is, you have to make it as convenient as possible for customers to buy your products. Second, you need to help your customers achieve uh, their goals. Uh, usually when we buy products, we want a certain job to be done. We buy a product in order to fulfill a certain mission. So if you want to build a strong brand, 
you need to provide products that help customers achieve their goals, the goals for which they buy uh, the products. And then you have to provide, you have to deliver the promise of fun and adventure. Customers want to have fun, want to have uh, adventure, so your brand has to be part of, uh, part of this. The user interface uh, uh, of your services and so on. They have to create this fun uh, experience, a great experience for your customers. And then provide uh, the promise of self-expression and recognition, and that could be in terms of uh, personalization. We all like to be recognized, and if you do that to your customers, you have the potential uh, to create uh, strong other brand. Of course, other things re remain uh, costing. And then provide them with a sense of uh, belonging, for instance, through creation of online communities where your customers can interact with one another, they can share their experiences, and you can interact uh, wi with them. So you give them a sense of uh, community. So co companies such as Apple, despite creating uh, great products, they still engage their customers in many of these ways, in including uh, the use of uh, brand communities. And of course, finally, if you, you have a plan and this plan cannot be uh, translated into action, it remains a dream or a mere wish. So in the end, we want to translate all the plan that we have created into action. And those are some of the questions that you need to answer with respect to action. What I'm, the level of investment that is required to implement all these uh, strategies that we have come up. And this has to be realistic, whether it's something that you can afford or not. And wh if we commit these uh, resources, what will be the payback? We have to consider the resources, uh, human resources. So that you, who will execute what with respect to the uh, strategy? So you have to identify the different activities and specific individuals that will uh, be uh, commission to those uh, activities. So define the responsibilities, and if there are any organizational uh, structural changes that have to be implemented, these are some of the aspects that you have to consider in the uh, action. And finally, control. That is, after implementing, uh, taking action, we want to assess in the end whether we have manage to achieve the objectives or not. And this is done through uh, control. And control can be done a combination of traditional uh, techniques, that is by conducting research to assess whether we have managed to achieve our objectives or uh, not. But also you can use uh, the modern te te techniques, such as uh, the assessment of uh, web server uh, log files, and the use of uh, search engine analytics that uh, we, we have today as a way of uh, assessment of the, uh, whether we have been able to achieve the digital uh, marketing uh, objectives that we set for ourselves. Now, <coughs> regarding the exam. So people have been asking how the exam will look like. Now, I, I understand that the entire 100% will come from the final examination, which means this is very important for you. And since it, this is the first time we offer the course, like the new structure of the course, this is what I will do. At the end of this month, I will come up with revision questions for all the chapters. And in April, I think before the last lecture or so, I will try to explain suggested solutions to some of those questions and how I expect you to approach the questions. And the questions that I will suggest will reflect exactly how the exam will look like. So it won't, it won't be different from what the exam will be like. So I'll give suggested questions to each of the topics that we have covered and those that we will cover. And then I will discuss. I will go through in the class that uh, how you should approach uh, the questions and how much is expected from you from each of the questions. I hope that will be fine. 